welcome back. Now we're going to be looking at melodies, analysing melodies to see what common elements they have, what associations they have, elements repeating, elements inverted, even things that go backwards if we're lucky. Here's our old friend Silent Night. Now there's quite a lot of information here. First of all we have this very typical Siciliano rhythm. The Siciliano was an old-fashioned dance even in Mozart's time. And there's something, oh, there's a little bit of nostalgia in this somewhere. Uh, there's certainly tenderness. It could even have something slightly, if you know, if we're talking about those type of shepherds, not real shepherds, we're talking about the shepherds that are made of Dresden porcelain. Yeah? But the, this sort of element of uh, longing for the past or longing for a distant land somewhere. Okay, so that's already built into the first three notes. And then we go down a third. What a difference that makes. But if we go down, we somehow seal the fact that we're oh, in a very, very tender world and we can almost start sighing and reaching for our pocket handkerchiefs. The second bar repeats it. Then we get another figure. Having gone this far up, we had a little ray of hope on the horizon, which again comes down as the first did. Another descending minor third. This is now a descending fourth, but it's a sequence carrying on from the third bar. And then, here's something new. Once again, we have our Siciliano back again, and we have... Well, that's the first bar again. But it doesn't sound like the first bar anymore. Now it's at the end of a phrase, instead of at the beginning. You might not even notice it's just a repeat of that first bar. So the composer has been very economical. This is an ascending minor third. This is also an ascending minor third, the highest note of the song. And the first time we get something with long notes, two long notes. Two more Sicilianos to end us down with the long note once again. I've taken the liberty of putting names of towns to, to these just so that you can recognize them more easily. Amsterdam, Prague. Amsterdam, Prague, London, Prague, London, Prague, London, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Prague, London, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Prague, London, Amsterdam, Dublin, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Prague. Now here's our old friend. We happened to live between Regensburg and Sulzbach Rosenberg, so I couldn't resist it. Regensburg, Regensburg, Sulzbach Rosenberg. Uh, they have the chum chum chum. This is already suggesting the rhythm of the sleigh bells. Chum chum chum, chum chum chum. We go up and straight down again, so it's very lively jumping around, and we ascend the scale to end the phrase. Now that's not the way a piece could really end. It's already opening the door to the next phrase. Again, we start with our sleigh bells and a dotted rhythm. You notice the appoggiatura here probably. A changing note there. And then the whole thing repeats apart from the very end. Again, very lively. Very fresh, a dominant seventh, a dominant coming down from the dominant note to end the piece with a perfect cadence. Now this chap doesn't sound like anybody to mess around with. He's very strict. This is a sort of side drum rhythm. Rum t t tum 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 t t tum. So the associations are already rather military. This chap doesn't go to see for some relaxation. He works there. And 
I don't think he likes it very much. And with two very, very heavy boots to end the phrase, we know he's not somebody you should mess around with. There's no end to the amount of associations, the amount of detail that you can get out of melodies of the past if you only have the patience to really look at them. But the next thing we're going to do is cut them up. So we need a pair of scissors and we're just going to be completely brutal. Here is Silent Night reduced to a 4-4 bar. I just... And then I invert that because that's my characteristic minor third. Instead of going... I can do all of these little variations. that as well. Okay, I can take all these little details and I'm just going to cut them out, transpose them if I like, put them into a new measure, do them backwards, do them on their heads, anything I can mess around with them to get as much material as I can in very, very tiny fragments. These are what I call snippets. And the next thing, of course, we're going to do is to put these snippets together in a new order and use them to make to create new melodies with the same character or even changing the character altogether. But the elements are going to be the same. This is what I call snippets. We're, of course, learning to compose. We are not, I'm not saying this is the way you should compose, but it is a very, very good way to put material together, just taking material from composers of the past. So please do look at songs of your favourite songs, analyse them, cut them up into snippets and make your own little scrapbook of snippets, little snatches of melody that mean something to you. And even the ones that don't mean anything to you, the more snippets you have in your scrapbook, the easier you're going to find it to compose melodies. The next thing we do is just listen in the internet to any songs, any little melodies you can get hold of, always applying your ear to the idea of analysing the tiniest elements of these things that you can put into, uh, put into snippets and, and use as melodies of your own in the future. Goodbye for now.